guys, so welcome back to another video. And this time it's a little bit of a different one, mainly because it's a tier list. <laughs> like, normally my plan was just to keep the tier list to the website, but some people kind of wanted me to explain some of my character choices. But also, in case you didn't know, Phoenix Master, he put out his tier list a couple of days ago now. And he's already making a new one, like, so his old tier list is going to become redundant soon enough. But either way, it caused a lot of people to give their views, and I kind of wanted to give my take on the tier list as well. Which is why I've put it in this format, even though I don't necessarily agree 100% with this format. Because I feel like you should judge characters based on other characters who fill similar roles in that. But either way, in case you don't know how this would work, essentially you have one way your tier systems like S plus S, A plus and that. And across the other way is like what unit category they fall in. So like a sword unit, a tome, etc. But um, the one thing which is different on this one is um, my A tiers are a little bit different because I've got an extra A tier. But essentially just to go through how I define each of these different tierings is that S plus tier is units who for the most part have no weaknesses or the weakness is so small that all their strengths completely like outclass it. They fulfill their role incredibly well and there is very little competition against them. Then S tier is very similar to S plus, they've got a ton of strengths but they normally have one or two key weaknesses which are super exploitable no matter what. So it's kind of hard to justify them being S+. And then you've got the three A tiers. I'm not going to lie, there's very little difference between the three of them. But essentially A+, plus is like the cream of the crop of A tier. A tier is the middle and A- minus is the bottom. But in general, A tier refers to units who are very good and like they can fight on their own behalf. They don't necessarily need support, but they definitely do appreciate it. Then B, U, well, B tier units, they are sort of they're very, a bit weaker than the A tiers, and they're generally going to need a lot more support to be able to get going. And then finally C tier, you're normally going to have to build an entire team around these guys or they're going to require so much work to be good you kind of have to ask yourself is it worth it to use another unit which i will state now like don't think this is of saying oh you should only use like the ones which are in s plus like feel free to use a selection but normally the way tier this sort of work for team based games anyway is saying if you're using a c tier unit you're probably going to want some higher tier units as well to support them on the offense and the defense Whereas if you're already using three S tier units, then you can probably get away with a B tier unit because they will find the support they need. And that's what this whole game's about. It's about how well you can support other units while also fighting for your own. So don't actually take this as, oh, never use that character because there is probably a scenario where that character could be good. And like I say, any character is technically viable, like with enough inheritance, they will become good. But obviously certain characters will end up being better because of stat spreads or simply just having those skills already. But anyway, let's jump into this. So in the S tier, well S plus tier for sword units, there's Ryoma, Black Knight and Alincia. Ryoma is very self-explanatory, he's got distant counter, you give him vantage and he's pretty much set to go. Like, defy it, attack, even though it's a subpar skill, it makes him into an absolute powerhouse. Like, you can hit over 60 attack with it. And even then you can life and death him and stuff. Like, I think everyone who's fought a Ryoma knows how he works. He's a little bit weaker, I would say, now, because of the meta being blue. But at the same time, it's like he still fulfills his role incredibly well and he's one of the few units from the beginning who is still consistently around then there's the black knight even though he's not out yet or he might be by the time i post this but um he's literally got amelia stat spread but he's red with distant counter already built in like he's amazing and he's got black luna which it, it just destroys units i will say that now it should not be a three turn cooldown it should be at least something like a four turn or a five turn or it should have some kind of other effect with it and then finally, there's Alincia. Alincia, a lot of people think is S. I think she's S plus. Like, if you think about it, she's a Lucina who can fly for a star. Like, she's got amazing offenses. On top of that, she has a brave sword built into her weapon, 
well, her weapon is a brave sword, but it's got more might and it reduces less speed, which makes it better than a brave sword by any regard. And she has access to fly buffs. Like, I do not know how you can not class this as an S rank when others class Cordelia as an S plus as well. She is essentially almost like a better red Cordelia. It's just that Cordelia has more sets. So for that reasoning, I think she's S+. Plus. My, my opinion might change later on, but I do think she'll be, well, being the only majorly good red unit for flyer teams, she's already going to be a staple, but she will become an arena staple eventually. Then in S tier, there's Lucina, Ike, Eric, and Olivia. Lucina is pretty self-explanatory. Probably the best offensive stat spread for a red sword unit. Like, you cannot argue with it. It is just, it is monstrous. And with Falchion, she hits 50 attack quite easily. On top of that, like, she can run distant counter and things, but in general, she's always been a good unit. Like, never pass up the chance to use a Lucina. But as for Ike, Ike is essentially, he's a lot like Ryoma, but he's more bulkier compared to speed wise. But the speed helps Ryoma more because it lets him avoid doubles, which is like the main thing he wants to avoid, but also gain doubles as well. Whereas Ike's sort of stuck at 30 speed, and 30 speed as you climb higher up in arena is kind of meh. But otherwise, Ike is still amazing. Like, you can give him Vantage, Quick Propose, Stay. To be honest, in some ways he's got more options than Ryoma. It's just that the options can only cover so many threats. Then Erika, like, she would not be up here if she did not have Sieglin. Like, Sieglin plus a Hone and Rallies, they just make her into an absolute support monster. Combine this with something like Triangle Adept, and she becomes a pretty solid Hector counter as well, who's quite bulky and very, very fast. Her low attack kind of gets mitigated because of all these reasons. So I think she's S. I wouldn't class her as S plus by any means. She's definitely sort of borderline S, A plus. But then you've also got Olivia, who I think is the best dancer in the game. I said this a while ago, and somebody asked me, why don't I think Azura? Mainly because I just think at the moment the colours kind of favour Olivia a little bit more because um, of the green mage matter and you can just encounter her technically. But um, in general, I think that's a reason. Plus, you can plus 10 Olivia quite easily. She's a great candidate for the 4 star plus 10. So just those reasons are, and being free as well. Like, I think they're all things which sort of incline her to be a very good dancing unit and probably the best one. And I, well, that's not to say the other dancers are bad, but I just think she's a bit above them. Probably why I use her myself, right? But again, the dancers depend on your team, so. But anyway, in A+, there's Grey, Xander, Marth, Roy, Choose Your Legends, Eldergun, Zephyr, Athena, Carol, Hannah, Master Lucina, and Lynn. So, Grey is at the top of A+, for a very good reason. And I'm not saying that, by the way, the boxes are normally kind of random, but... He's definitely at the top of A+, plus for me. I think he's a completely underrated unit. Like, Brave Sword turns him into an absolute monster. He can just decimate armies if he wants to. He's got Zambato naturally, so he's a good counter to Horse Emblem. I don't get why more people don't use Grey when they have him. He is a pretty solid, like, red unit. Like, people, I think, claim he's a bit slow, but to be honest, he can hit 40 speed quite easily. Like, with the right skills in that, and even with life and death, he's still got very moderately good bolt. So, I think he's a lot better than people give him credit for, which is why I put him in A+. Then there's Xander. I might as well talk about Xander and Eldergun together now, because they both essentially do the same role in being this bulky red horse unit who can take hits and dish them back incredibly hard. However, Xander, well, they both kind of rely on quick riposte to double, However, the main difference between the two is Xander has Distant Counter naturally, so he can run another A skill, whereas Eldergun has a minus one on all his specials, so he can run Ignis instead of Bonfire, and theoretically be better in that way. I think they're pretty equal. I think Xander's a little bit better, just having that A slot open anyway, but they're pretty much the same unit in my book. But I do see Xander more, although I don't see them enough either to be S tier worthy in Arena. But yeah, so that's the thing I should mention as well. Um, this tier list as well is not only my ideas. Um, me and my friend Jen, who big shout out to her, we did like 500 arena battles to get data on who is commonly seen in arena. And we're still gathering data because we want more, but this is based somewhat on that and the ones we've gotten off Tumblr so far. So, but anyway, back to the tier list. Um, there's Marth. Marth is essentially, he's a little bit weaker than Lucina, 
but he's a lot bulkier, which the bulk you can argue may put him in S, but I still think he's A+, plus. he just doesn't hit it for me. I don't see him enough around. I always see Lucina or somebody else more. So for that reason, he's in A+, plus, but he is a very, very good sword unit. Then there's the Roy Choose Your Legends edition, who best offensive red cavalier in the game, undoubtedly. Like, his start spread is just incredible. However, I don't think he's S-ranked because to use Desperation, ideally, you want like 35 speed. And to be honest, it's probably only going to go up from there as we get a speed creep going. But um, he relies too much on horse buffs, I think, for his speed. But his attack is fine. Like, he will always do well with his attack. But I think if you really want to utilize Desperation, then you kind of need horse buffs. And he doesn't do well when he's separated from the team. So for that reason, he's like at top of A+, plus. I just can't put him in S. And even then, I still don't see him as that much on arena teams. It's always normally Xander who I see. So then um, there's Zephyr. Zephyr would have been higher up, but sadly the Black Knight is going to knock him down, just being the better red armor unit. Um, that's not to say Zephyr's useless, but he's got like this niche of being a super bulky distant counter user, but you have to use your A slot for that. Whereas Black Knight doesn't so you can kind of see but he's still definitely very good if you've invested in him don't feel bad about black knight coming um next three athena carol and hannah all fulfill similar roles they're very good brave sword with Wodal users and even like snedge users they are all very similar in that spreads high speed high attack but moderately low defenses carol is probably the one which well the main difference is that Carol has high HP, Athena's got good defences, and Hannah is just a monster when it comes to attack and speed. Which probably makes Hannah the best, then Athena, then Carol. Because ideally, being desperation users, you want low HP. But either way, though, they're all essentially the same unit in my book. They all do very similar things. And so they all earn a space in A+. Um, then you've got Mast Lucina. She is, to say the least... I kind of underrated her on my last tier list, and I do kind of regret it, because I think she is now A+, just because, like, she's essentially Lucina with no IVs, which in some cases is good, but in some cases it's bad, because obviously Lucina can be better, because she can boost her attack or speed, but um, other than that though, she's essentially the same unit, so I don't know why I wouldn't put her higher up, I put her in like A last time, and I'm like, probably should have put her in A+, but... You know what? I'm going to do it this time, so... But then um, there is Lynn. Lynn, I put in A last time, and I think she's moved up to A plus since, mainly because of Wrath. And if I'd made this before the new um, banner came out, then she would still be A. But Wrath is a very controversial skill at the moment, because, like, you can't run Desperation or anything with it. So Brave users are very good with it, but so are... Um, any units who have low cooldowns. However, Lin's able to combine the two because uh, <laughs> she can essentially run Wrath. She has Desperation in her weapon. So as long as the cooldown is, let's say you've got Moonbow and you get into Wrath range, then that is minus one, which makes it a one turn, and then Desperation props. And if she's got enough speed, she'll always double. Like, she can get to 40 speed, I think, naturally, with life, oh, let me think, she's 30 speed naturally, plus three from an IV puts her at 40 so she can get to 45 speed which is nuts um she could theoretically as well um what do you call it get um i think a plus attack nature is better for her just because of her low attack but either way 40 like 41 45 whatever it is is still amazing for a wrath user so i think she's probably the best user of wrath by far because you can give her a break from you know, that get rid of desperation kai but still you get what i'm saying hopefully um a rank, you have Pala, Eliwood, um, Seth, Drog, Ogma, Luke, Longku, Lloyd, Navar, um, Kane, Krom, and Corin Male. Pala is, well, she was the best red unit. She's kind of dropped down now because of Alincia. She's still the red user with a use, though, but she's very bulky, so she's naturally a better um, Hector counter for Flyer Emblem teams. So don't feel too bad, again, about Alincia coming into the game. Then there's a Lywood. He's a very good um, green mage counter, especially to all the green mages at the moment. Great choice for distant counter, but if you death blow him, 
he gets to plus 10, I believe, with Durandal of Quick, which is also nuts. However, he lacks the speed to be any higher. Like, 30 speed is just kind of meh. Or it's around 30 speed, I think. Or it might be 31, I don't know. <laughs> but um, then you've got Seth. Seth is essentially um, Xander and Eldegan 0.5. He is the same unit in concept, it's just... He doesn't have the right weapon for it, and doesn't have access to a weapon which can grant him that either. Ruby Sword is good for him because it lets him be a complete green wall, but at the same time, it's like... It's hard to justify him over the other two, but he is still a decent unit at best. Like, when people say he got screwed, I don't think he got screwed that much. It's mainly his sort of attack and speed, which is the... His defense otherwise are pretty solid. Then you've got Drog. Drog, I rarely see anyway, but he's a fast armor unit, so he has that niche to him. You probably won't see him anymore whatsoever now that the Black Knight's coming, because there's three choices, but either way, I think having Brave Sword as an armor knight in Hately as well is also very good for him, so. Then you've got Ogma. Ogma, I don't see enough. I see some people put him at A, plus, but I just don't see it. He's got amazing attack and defense, but. Besides that, I just think there's other better Brave Sword users out there, and like I said, there's not enough usage of him seen in Arena, I think, to justify him being an A+. Then um, there's Luke. Luke I kind of put in A, because I've never used him since I don't have him, and at the same time, I never see him in Arena. So, from what I can gather, he's a very meh unit, or there's better options. And from the research I did, like, damage calcs, he doesn't even necessarily want Brave Sword, despite it being an amazing weapon. But, um, I think the best comparison you can do is Kane, who I think Kane, well, Kane was, before Roy, the best offensive red horse unit, in my opinion. And I think, compared to Kane, he's just kind of, he's lacking in some regards. Like, the speed holds him back a little bit, so I think Kane's better as an option. But... Either way, I still think at the end of the day, they both do the same relative sort of job, so I put them both in A. Like, Luke could go lower, I guess, but who knows. Then you've got Longku. Longku is... he's really underrated, because there was an ask the other day about what set is good for Longku, and I did some search, because they said about Slaying Edge, and he can get like 130 KOs. Um, the only reason he's down here is because of the other three people I mentioned earlier who all won, like Slaying Edge and stuff, a lot better than him. In fact, the same applies to Navarre as well, like he's only down here because he suffers from poorer attack and speed compared to those other three. Like, he can pull off the same sets just as well, but normally those three will outshine him in almost every regard. Then there's Lloyd, or Lloyd, however you say it. I don't know why I say Lloyd. I think it's from, like, my younger days from playing Animal Crossing, but still. He's a very good res counter, and his weapon's kind of unique. And I do see him from time to time in the arena, but otherwise, he's a very balanced sword unit in my book. I wouldn't count too much on him, but I think he's just sort of there. He's not bad, he's not good, he's just middle of the road. Then you've got Crom. Krom is a very interesting unit in the fact that you can Brave Sword him, and he's like a unit who prefers Brave Sword over their legendary weapon. But, um, yeah, he will just decimate with Brave Sword. Do not underestimate him. His attack is so high already. It's like when you give Effie a Brave Lance, he just will rip through opponents with ease. His only weakness is, like, his speed, unfortunately. Like, his defense is amazing, his resistance is passable, and his HP is like it's monstrous but his speed just lets him down and stops him being a true defensive unit um then you've got corin male he is very interesting as well because you can life and death him and get rid of his defenses for offense but i feel like that kind of ruins male corin's whole purpose of being a unit who can do both like i think swift sparrow is his best option still because you maintain your bulk while also then being able to act on, um, and, well, player phase. However, I just think in general, there are better red units who have those stat boosts innately, and when we get into a more defensive meta, then maybe I'd put him in A+, plus, but otherwise he's sitting in A at the moment. He's middle of the road for me. Then in A-, minus, I put Sailor, Selena, Roy, Stahl, Laszlo, Shida, Arm, and um, Alphonse. Salif is very meh as well. He's 
kind of reliant on brush assault, except brush assaults on old skill you kind of want to avoid using too much because otherwise you can die quite easily. Um, other than that though, he's kind of like Chrome but worse. Like, I just wouldn't use him too much. But he's still a decent red unit, don't get me wrong. Um, Selena as well, she's got the speed, the defenses and the HP. The one thing she's lacking is the attack. In fact, in some ways it makes her a bit like Erica, but better on the defensive side. It's just she doesn't have a weapon which can make up for it. Your best bet is normally like Ruby Sword or Woe Dow or something to really push it through. But the amount of effort you have to put into that, it's kind of like... You could probably use someone else to a better effect, but if you love her, she is definitely usable. But I plan to do it one day, because she was like the first red unit I got and I screamed. <laughs> In case you don't know, I do love Selena and Cordelia. Right, mainly because of the Julianne Taylor, but still. Then there's Roy. Roy is a balanced unit, and as we all know, balanced units just don't fare well in this game. Like, he leans more to being defensive because of his weapon, but ideally you want something to make him offensive as well. So he just kind of falls there, but he's like he's open to interpretation, except most interpretations can only get you so many results. So obviously, I kind of put him here until we can find like a set which makes him like devastating to people, then he would go higher up. But otherwise, for now, he's there to me. Then you've got Style. Style is Seth 0.5 or Xander 0.25. Uh, essentially anything I've said to them applies to him. Laszlo, he's essentially Krom as well, except it's the stat points for the two of them are so, like, minuscule. It's like, Laszlo has two more speed and it's like something less attack, I think, and maybe one point less attack. However, you'd think that make Laszlo better, it does not. It is essentially like saying, well, it's like two points of speed which do nothing, and there's another example of this later on. But um, they do nothing for him. They don't get him doubles, which he would need to get otherwise. And they don't save him from anything he dies from anyway. It's kind of like in Pokemon, when you EV train specifically in like VGC to speed creep certain threats and then use the other EVs somewhere else where there'll be more abuse. It's sort of... It's just they're pointless. Chrom's stat spread makes him better in all regards. But otherwise, they're very similar units. And they both do great with Brave Sword. Like, if you have a Laszlo, Brave Sword him, please. <laughs> Just brave sword him, that's all you need to do. Um, Sheeta, she's like, she's definitely the worst red fire now. Like, she, her res is amazing, but besides that, she hasn't got a lot going for her. Like, she needs to rely on Wodao for damage, but even then, you don't necessarily want to rely on your weapon for doing damage. So, then there's Arm, Arm, like some of the other lords down, her, well, down low on the tier list. Um, he suffers from a lack of speed. And if he had, like, even two more points of speed, I think he would be insanely better. But he just struggles so much. And I think, ideally, the best set, if you want to use Wind Sweep, would just be to life and death him. But otherwise, he's not seen enough in the arena to be put any higher. His attack is monstrous, though, as well. So, <laughs> um, then you've got Alphonse. Alphonse, again, is another person who appreciates Brave Sword, but he just doesn't have the speed to keep it up. And arguably as well, you have to raise him from a one-star unit, so kind of bad. <laughs> then in B tier, B tier, I put um, Saber, Hinata, and Fear. Um, they all sort of fulfil this role where they want to be tanks for either defence or resistance, and then use quick riposte or something, or use, oh, in Fear's case, her speed actually to double foes back and get off powerful specials. But uh, the problem is, like, compared to some of the other units in this game who can do it well, they just fall flat. Like, I'm not kidding, yesterday I ran into a plus 10 Hinata in the arena, like, a 5-star Hinata. And he, he just got one shot still. It didn't really make much of a difference, and the same goes to Saber. I never see Saber. And Fear, I've seen a couple of Fears, but, like, they're normally just encounter variants. I just think compared to the other units, they just don't have the right stat spread to do what they want to do. They just have to rely on using skills like Bonfire or Glacies to get their damage off. And finally in C tier, I put Tobin. Tobin, by god, if you can make Tobin good, you can make anybody good. Like, he is just... I, I don't want to call him bad because he's got a decent stat spread and he's a villager type as well. 
but it's just the fact he requires so much work. He needs like everything reworked in his base kit to actually be super good and viable. But otherwise, he's he's the worst red unit that base I would say. Like if you want to use him, pour all you can into him. It's all out or nothing with Tobin. <laughs> Then um, for the red tome units in S plus there's Selica. I put Selica in S plus mainly because like in death she just nukes everything. And she's one of the few units who prefers a plus attack but, um, boon over a plus speed. And I just think in general, like she's not great on the defense by any means, but she can play run away with renewal and heal herself back up to full. Or if you don't want to use Renewal, you can have a healer on your team and use that to heal her. And she can then run something else in the beast slot, like a breaker skill, which even though she loses 5 HP, she will still be in the range for it. So I think she's definitely up there with the other units. But you could argue maybe she is S, but I think she's S plus by a long shot. Um, in A plus, I put Katarina and Taja. I think they're not S class material anymore. Like they could have been in the past, but there's just been um, a lack of what you call it, red. Well, Erica supporters and Ethereum supporters lately, and Rora Blade in general has just dropped off because red mages aren't that good. Um, I would say Katarina is probably the better of the two. I say that with a question mark. Like I'm trying to remember Tarja's and Katarina's attack stats here. But Katarina's got like two more speed, I think, which makes her slightly better as a Raro Blade user. But Taja has starting glow innately, so... But essentially they're the same unit when it boils down to it. Um, in A tier there is Sanaki and Lelina, and Leo and Sophia. So, Sanaki and Lelina, they're essentially here because they're amazing Raro Raven users. They can use Raro Blade as well, but not to great effect being so slow. But, um... They're very decent at being Rara Raven, and they can take so many hits, and it patches up their poor defense stat, like, and they still hit, like, a new, like, anything green will just die. Um, as for Leo, he's kind of here, because he's Rara Raven as well, but he can also run Rara Blade because of horse buffs, and I think that's what separates him from A-, minus is the fact he's got two sets he can run, and one of them works just as well without horse buffs, aka Ra Raven, seriously. If you have a Leo and don't like using Horse Emblem, please Ra Raven because you will get great results. He's kind of like male Robin but red on a horse. Like, I need to Ra Raven mine, but I just can't be asked to get a Henry to level um, 20 and then make him 5 star. Plus, I'm out of feathers at the moment, so. But anyway, speaking of Ra Raven, there's Sophia, who is arguably probably the best user of it. She's got some amazing attack behind her and defense is the only problem is she is slow as a truck. Like, if she could be wary fighter, she would instantly be better, but obviously you can't. So she's kind of stuck being slow, but that's her only weakness. Otherwise, though, she's a great counter to all the bow, us bow users at the moment. Sorry about that. Um, then there's Summer Leo in A-. minus. He can mainly do Ra Raven, and that's about it. I don't really see him being used for anything else. He's kind of like, if people like Leo, they'll use him, but that's about it. And then in B tier, there is Henry and Rai. Henry is your standard Ra Raven user, except he has no attack whatsoever, so just please pick someone else if you really need Ra Raven. But if you love Henry, he's certainly usable and will do a lot with special prop. Rake, I put him down here because even though there's that one Japanese guy who puts him in arena for fun, like, I'm not kidding, there's like a plus 10. 5 star raid on like a team with other units who have never been like 5 stars before like Matthew and stuff and they have no skills and they literally are there just to troll you but he just I don't see any use behind him compared to other users so but then again it's not like the red units have tons of competition so then in the red B slot in A plus there's Tiki Young and in A there's Tiki Adult the main differences between them is that Tiki A is an all-rounder, except she's an above-average all-rounder, being a dragon, so that makes her great, and especially with her attack, speed, and um, defense, whereas adult Tiki does have more attack, but her speed is just so abysmal, it's kind of meh. Like, I know they say 30 speed isn't that great when you get higher up, but the thing is, like, one, when we get home dragons, Tiki adult will, or Tiki um, young will become better. But also, too, it's like, 
there is a substantial difference in playing other level 30 speeds as well, so but that's just how I see the red beach units. Um, yeah, yeah, that is how I rated the red units. Onto the blue ones, in S+, plus for the Lancers, I put Tana and Cordelia. They're very similar, literally the only thing which separates them is like one point in their attack and speed stats, and it's like Tana's one point faster, but one point weaker. So Cordelia is like your best Brave Hunt user, while Tana is just a flying Lucina. Like, they're just deadly for both of them and the fact that they can both run fire sweep as well and if tana really wanted to she could run brave lance but even then her main main weapon is amazing like being able to reduce damage by seven is just it's such an amazing ability i find and i use her with swiss sparrow because then you keep the bulk as well so but either way i think it's very clear why they are s plus units and normally, if you have Fire Emblem, you want to be using them. Although, please, can we stop with the Tana using Guidance on Fire Emblem team? Like, please. Just give that anything else. Um, S tier, there's Azura, Lucina, Choose Your Legends, Epi, and Hinoka. Azura, again, is up here, mainly because she's a dancer. She's very good at what she does. Um, I think right now she's struggling because we're slowly shifting to green meta. Well, mainly we've shifted there with mages. And now Armor Emblem's on the rise because of units like Amelia. But otherwise, she's still an amazing dancer for your team and the better of the two blue ones. Um, then there's Lucina, Choose Your Legends. She is an amazing unit. Her main weakness being her resistance, and um, that is about it. But the fact that her res is that bad, it's just... You kind of have to worry. But I'm telling you now, just if you life and death her, she's still decently bulky. And on top of that, she can reach some insane speed and attack stats. So, yeah. But otherwise, though, I just think she's a little bit underwhelming to being an uh, S plus unit. But otherwise, in this tier, she's probably the closest to being S plus. Um, then you've got Effie. I don't think Effie's as good as everyone makes out to be. Because, like, Worry Fighter, for those of you who don't know, is good because. By the time you get to 50% and it stops working, you're probably dead already. But um, most Effies, you can outplay them. They need support these days and like buffs and stuff. And I think eventually she will kind of fall off. But otherwise, having the highest attack stat in the game definitely puts her up here. Like, And the ability to wield a Brave Lance as well is just... It's nuts. Um, then there's Hinoka. Hinoka is only up here because she's essentially Cordelia but with a little bit less attack and speed, I think. I think she's got 33 speed. I might be mistaken. But otherwise, she's a decent brave unit as well. But Cordelia is the better option. Then in A+, I put Ephraim, Lucas, Donald, Robin, Summer, um, Est, Catria, Oscar, um, Camus, Volta, and Nafini. Or Nafine, however you say it. Um, Ephraim, he is he's essentially Erica with more attack and defense. However, his speed lets him down, and that's the only reason. Like, if he had more speed, he would be better, but he just kind of fulfills the same role. So anything I said about Erica kind of applies to him as well, but speed and resistance minus. Um, then there's Lucas and Donald. They can both be Brave Lance units who are very powerful, especially Donald being a villager and all, but I think Lucas is better because, well, in case you don't know, Lucas is probably my favourite unit in the game right now. <laughs> but, literally, he can run a Brave Hunt set, he can run defensive sets, and his attack and defence are just monstrous. Like, he has the highest attack of, I want to say, well, I think it was a Blue Lance units, and then, um, what you call it, Bridal Charlotte came along. But it's still incredibly high, and I would not underestimate it. Um, as for Summer Robin, she is a very good... She's like one of the faster Lance units, which puts her up here. But she kind of fails attack-wise, I find, sometimes. And no, it's never clear on what she wants to do, which is great because you can make her into whatever, but at the same time, I think she wishes she had a little bit more going for her. But otherwise, she's a solid A-plus unit in my book. Um, Est is up here, and no defense poly jokes, please. But, um, no, she's up here mainly because she is a decent Brave Lance unit, but I think Hinoka and Cordelia, who already come with it and have better speed than her, are just better Brave Lance units. Like, I don't know why people think she's S rank, like... Yeah, she's got 35 attack, but so does Cordelia. 
and Cordelia has more speed. And then there's Hanoka, who, yes, has two points less, but she's got three points more speed, if she is 33 speed. So it's kind of like, why is S being put higher than Hanoka, but still. And then there's Catria. Catria, before um, Skill and Herons came out, she was like the premier blue lance unit you had to have on your team. She's kind of dropped off since, I'm not gonna lie. She's kind of fallen from grace and stuff. I still think she's decent at A+. She's a very good fire sweep lance unit, and she can be very good enemy phase as well. And she's kind of diverse. Like, being a flyer with 32 defense is nothing bad at all. And like having an ability to have a two-turn Luna, or even a two-turn bonfire, is pretty insane. I put her in A+. She might be at the bottom of A+, but who knows. Then there's Oscar, who has the best offensive stat for a blue Cavalier unit. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of think he's better than Camus. I've probably just spoken blasphemy. But yeah, <laughs> if you Brave Lance him, he is monstrous. And on top of that, you can make him, well, keep his Sapphire Lance and make him a Lance and Sword counter. But I think Oscar is very underrated. And that was because he came with Lincia and Nafine. But then you've got... Camus, who, yeah, I think he's A+, plus. I don't think he's S rank at all. He's he's essentially blue Xander, but with more speed. But um, his res is kind of lacking to me, and his defense wishes it could be a little bit higher. But I don't see how he's an S plus unit. Like, I'll admit he's good, but he's not that good. Like, for example, I think when me and Jem were going through it, we encountered some, like, 15 Camuses in the whole of Tier 20 arena. Well, tier 20, 19, and 18. He's not used that much anymore in Arena well, for some of the teams, and I think that's because of Reinhardt, but still, I don't think he's S plus material by any means. Right. Then there's Volta. Volta is probably one of the best flies in the game right now. Um, his weapon is kind of busted with life and death, or darting blow, or death blow. He can be insane. Just give him desperation, literally. That's all you need to do to make him good. Right. I wouldn't, like, people are worried about his weapon as well, don't worry honestly, it's it's little damage, just don't fury it, please. Fury, like, it seems like a good idea, but he takes, he gets less KOs than he normally would, so. And then finally in A+, is Nafine, who is a very fast and powerful um, lance unit, and she comes with staying lance, so it means her moon bow is a one charge cooldown. But her main claim to fame was Wrath, which I'm still mixed on how I feel about on her, because Essentially, she wants to play hit and run with it, because once you get to 50% HP, it's like she's going to be dying to most things. And so she wants to either run away and then attack, or she wishes she had Desperation, which in some cases I want to say she would just do better with Desperation by default. But either way, I think having that versatility is an asset to her, and like I say, being a fast lance unit in a meta game where there are not very many fast lance units is a bonus, so she's A plus my blind book, and probably one of the higher ones. Then in A tier, I put Perry, Roderick, Abel, um, Bridal Charlotte, um, Sharina, um, Gwendolyn, and Shana. Basically, Perry, Roderick, and Abel are all very similar. They can do Brave Lance incredibly well, but they're all just outclassed by Oscar now. <laughs> that was pretty much it. But uh, they all are very good fire sweep lance shooters as well. So they all kind of fall into that similar gap. And they've got different defences to separate themselves. But otherwise, essentially the same unit in my book. Um, then there's Bridal Charlotte. I did originally put her in A+, but I kind of dropped her just because of her usage results. And I just don't see her enough to justify it. But otherwise, she's got some amazing attack and amazing speed. Well, not amazing, but decent speed. And she can take a hit with her HP as well, but her defences do let her down a little bit. And plus also being the only unit in the game where she's got a special version, but not a normal version, is also interesting. But that won't affect her cheering. But yeah, I put her in A. She's a solid pick for the Alanx user. Um, then it's all about the bottom of A. There's Sharina, who she used to enjoy the days of Fury, but she's kind of dropped off a bit. And I can see why. I wasn't a fan of her in the first place. And as we're getting faster lance users, she's going to drop off even more, I think. But otherwise, I still think she's the best of the original starting three. Um, then you've got Gwendolyn. She's a decent blue um, knight, but Effie outclasses her. But she is seen a lot more, actually, higher up. Like, you see her on sets with, like, Bakut's lance and stuff, and she just becomes a resistance monster. It's 
ridiculous, quite honestly. Um, then you've got Shana. Shana is, again, she's like Katria in that, but resistance based. And she's incredibly fast. And you will see her quite a few times in Tier 20, I can guarantee you that now. But otherwise, she kind of lacks things which like Cordelia and Tana have and just wishes she could be a little bit better. So she's in A rank, she's a decent unit to use. But also, she's too good for skill and inheritance. Like, I think every one of her skills has some kind of use. Just, by God, I, I just cry when I call Shana. But then in A minus, there's Baku, Oboro, Subaki, and Matilda. Um, Baku, like, a lot of people think he's really bad. I think he's a little bit better. Like, I think most people would put him in B, but I put him in A minus just because he can run Brave Lance. And in the right setup, he gets 120 KOs or something on the main cast. Oh, that was when he came out. But um, he's a decent Brave Lance user. I, I put him below, well, he's got, like, the best Brave Lance results out of any of them, but his speed lets him down so much, he just can't be an A-rank tier. Like, he's one of the slowest units out there, and he will get doubled by everything, which is why Brave Lance is his best weapon, because if you're going to get doubled anyway, you might as well make it even more. <laughs> But, um, yeah, then there is Aboro, Aboro's like Lucas and Donald, except she just doesn't have, like, the stats to support herself. She's got decent resistance, but besides that, otherwise, she just doesn't have enough going for her, I find. And again, you rarely see her in Arena. The only time I've seen her was actually the other day when I saw her with a plus 10 and 9, she was plus 3. So, but yeah, otherwise, though, she is decent. Uh, she just requires a lot of work. Then there's Subaki, who has a niche among the flies, and being that he's incredibly defensive. But um, again, other flies are generally better than him, I find. And he is one of the ones who are seen relatively more in tier 20, but otherwise, if you're not looking for bulk, just go with another flyer. Um, then there's Matilda, the sad story of her being worse than she is in Echoes. I think she's A- minus just because of resistance and you can run distant counter or something. And she can be good, but her stats are normally, I think, on the par apart from resistant, they're all worse than Perry's. So it's like, Perry is normally a better pick than her, which pains me to say. But um, yeah, that's how I feel on her. Then in B tier, there is Lorena, Claire, Jagan, Spring Xander, Clive, and Sully. Florida, she struggles really hard with her stat spread. Like, I don't know why I thought she was faster before, but she's got like 28 speed. But yeah, there's normally better flies. Her niche is being a res tank, and you want to give a distant counter if you do invest in her. Claire is very similar, but she's a lot faster, which probably makes her better than Florina. However, her attack is so poor, it's like she barely dents anything, and you kind of have to stick with Silver Lance, or find like Fire Sweep Lance and give back to her. But otherwise, most flyers will do her job better. Um, Jagan again is a resistance tank, but again, he lacks the attack. <laughs> In fact, all three of them are res tanks. Then you've got Spring Xander, who he just doesn't have the right set for him. He wants to be a defensive wall like normal Xander. However, his speed is atrocious, as is his res, and he just can't do anything with that attack stat, even with crit for post day. So, not looking too great for him. Still, though. When we get Xander Emblem, <laughs> I will try and find a way to find one, even though I don't have him. Um, Clive, he's essentially worse for Coop. Um, that speed tier thing I mentioned earlier applies here. Clive has more speed, but it does not absolutely nothing. It like saves him from Maui, I think, doubling him, but now he still KOs him anyway, so... I think he's worse than Baku by a long shot. He can still use Brave Lance to fix his stats, but still. Then finally, the Sully, and Sully, again, she hasn't really got an issue. I honestly don't know what she does, but she just doesn't compare to any of the other horse units, so. Anyway, though, in the blue tones, there is Reinhardt in S+. He is amazing, as I'm sure you all know, just death blow him. That's all you need. He can run, like, any beast skill. I'm pretty sure all these skills we're getting, where it's, like, infantry only, is to stop Reinhardt becoming better. But still, I'm not going to go into too much detail about him. Then, S+. Plus, Owen is up here because she's just weak on Reinhardt, but with speed, so she can quad. Like, I don't know how people see this as a bad thing. Like, she is incredible with life and death. Like, I'm telling you, do not misjudge her. She will decimate you if you let her. And plus, she can run, like, on a quad set, she can run, like, Iceberg and just sweep. 
Um, Lindy and Delthea, they're pretty equal to me. My, well, they've got speed differences between the two, but otherwise they're amazing units. Delthea is an amazing support unit as well, so... And A+, pretty much all the seasonal mages in Spring Lucina, um, Bridal Shida, and Spirit, um, Summer Corrin. Um, they all do the same thing with Blarblade, and they all rely on buffs. They've got varying attack stats, like she does the worst, probably, but they all get similar results. Like, Summer Corrin's probably the best because she has access to fly buffs, but that's about it. Then there's Robin Mail in A+, and, like, Raven, well, Raven Tomes in general are really misappreciated, and I think Robin in general is a bit misappreciated, and I think he deserves to be up there. Um, plus also, my friend would probably kill me. <laughs> but, um, no, then there's Ursula and May in A rank. Ursula can run Blarblade as well, but not to the extent of the other blue mages. So can May, but her speed lets her down. However, May is a very, very good, like, um, imagine like Sanaki and Lilina as a blue unit. That's what May does. She's an amazing Ra Ra well, Bla Raven user for that reason. And then finally, all the way in Z, there is Odin, who I would say his only good set is the Bla Raven set, but you kind of have to do so much grinding for it. But I've seen people do it, and it's decent. He just won't kill a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> um, anyway, though, finally, in the beasts for the blues, A, Ninian, and Naoi. Now he is nowhere near an S or an S plus unit. Like, by God, she's no longer good. Like, Falchion Matter is no longer a thing, but neither is Sword Matter. So, and Ninian, she just doesn't have the offensive presence to be an S plus dancer, in my opinion. She's A plus at most. And then Corin is, she's A and only just. I just think you don't see her enough compared to the other two to be justified as an A plus. But otherwise, she's very fast and she can hit hard in the right circumstances, but otherwise, that's about it. Anyway, luckily that is the main majority of units done, and I can get onto the green. Um, in Axe, there's Hector. I'm not gonna lie. Personally, I think Hector is an S rank, because he's getting easier to play around. But one, the unit results they showed Hector was used something like 20% of the time in Arena. So I kind of have to let that favor him into being S+. Plus. But also, I've started seeing um, Shield Pulse sets on him more, which I think is probably better for him in the long run as a defensive unit. But still, most people know what makes Hector great anyway. Um, S rank, Minerva, Churchy, um, Brave, Ike, and Amelia. Minerva, I used to think was S+. Plus. I don't think so anymore. She's still amazing, but I think she needs a new skill to liven her up a bit. Um, otherwise though, she hits hard, she can hit fast, she can run Fury, Vantage, tons of stuff. She is so diverse in what she can do, I don't know why people think she's worse. <laughs> then Churchy is also self-explanatory, just give her a Brave Axe, 4 star plus 10 or 5 star and she's good to go. Like, even with Death Blow, that makes her even more deadly, because she's essentially then green Cordelia. The only reason she's below is because of her speed and the fact that she kind of, um, only has that one set, which really lets her wreck havoc. Um, Brave Ike is S rank mainly because obviously Desperation is useless against him, as is Grindheart and everyone, because that 80% damage modifier. But he still dies, I find, to units with high enough attack. Like, for example, my Sonya can one round uh, Ike even with like two hits, because the first hit does so much damage. Like, the second hit is literally just the chip damage. But Otherwise, though, he's a great defensive unit as well. Like, just quick repost him and he's good to go with Steady Breath. Um, Amelia, she's an amazing armor unit as well. She suffers from the fact she's very team base, I find. And her one movement does let her down when it comes to being the ability to be an S plus unit. But otherwise, highest base stat total in the game, you cannot argue with that. She's fast, she's powerful, and good defenses. Um, A plus, there's some Atiki, Legion, and Raven. They're all here because they're amazing Brave Axe users. But Tiki, by far, is the best one. And I'm not even kidding. She's got like, the highest attack for a green unit, I want to say. Or one of the highest. But um, she can like decimate units. I think my Tiki is at like 48 attack or something, naturally. So with Death Blow, that's like 54 attack on initiation. Do not underestimate her. Right, if you have Tiki, I would suggest using her. Um, A rank, I put Titania, Michaelis, and Frederick. 
Um, so Tanya, she's a very good res tank. She's very good at what she does, but she lacks any offensive presence without the help of skills. Like, her attack is just too low, in my opinion. She needs to keep Emerald Axe or have life and death with Brave Axe. Um, Frederick, on the other hand, he's very good with Brave Axe. He can hit hard and fast. Well, with Brave Axe, but he's too slow to quad. And there's normally better green options for a horse emblem team. Cough, Selica, cough. <laughs> but, what do you call it? Then there's Michaelis, who's... Michaelis is slow Minerva, essentially, but he's got great defense and can be a decent quick riposte user. But besides that, he hasn't got that much going. So, um, A minus, as you can see by the tiny Spring Crom. I put Spring Crom, um, Sheena, um, Camilla, Anna, Frederick, um, what's his name? I think he always shows up. Oh my god, not Bart, Bartray, that's it. And, um, Narsian. So, Spring Crom, originally I had an A rank, and I, I'm still torn on this if it's A rank or A minus. He does great with Brave Axe, um, he can do great um, with his speed in general, but I think in general other action units just tend to outclass him, but he is definitely decent. If I had like an A minus plus, I would probably put him there. <laughs> That's how I feel on him. Um, Sheena, there's no reason really to use Sheena over Hector or Amelia these days. She's well, she's very good resistance-wise, but otherwise she's kind of fallen off now. Um, Camilla, her attack is too low. She's essentially flying to Tanya, but she doesn't have the ability of being a horse unit either, and she needs a lot more investment. So then there is Anna. Anna is very good and probably the second best out of the three starting units. Like her weapon allows her to dart across the battlefield, which combined with Desperation could be quite amazing. But otherwise, again, her attack lets her down and there's better users. Um, then you've got Summer Xander and Bartray. They're both very good Brave Axe shooters, especially Bartray, because he can hit incredibly hard with his attack stat. And Summer Xander as well, he's got decent attack and amazing defense. But otherwise, compared to the Brave Axe shooters in A+, they're nowhere near on the same level. You'd normally want to use one of those three. Then there's Narshian, who I would have put in B, but after my research the other day and learning he can actually be a Reinhardt counter, I put him in A-. minus. But that is my only reasoning. That distinct counter, Emerald Axe, is enough to KO a Reinhardt. But yeah, he's definitely good and he's decent as a res, ma res mage for blue units. But yeah. Um, B rank, I put... Um, Bast, Arthur, Gunter and Hawkeye and Baruka, mainly because they all suffer from either low speed or low attack, and they can't really do anything which one of the other characters above them does well. I, out of the four, five of them, um, Baruka's probably got the most niche use, because she's like Subaki and she can be a flying wall, and Hawkeye's got decent res, but otherwise there's not really a reason to use them, if that makes sense. But um, anyway, in the green tone category, no one in S plus. In S, I put Nino, um, Summer Elise, Sonia, and Julia. Nino is incredibly good, as anyone knows, but she's kind of dropped off a little bit, and I think that's because there's so many green mages now. Where the competition is getting stiff. Um, Summer Elise is essentially Nino, but with more attack and a little bit less speed, but they both essentially do the same job. They are essentially equivalents to each other, but Nino kind of edges her out because she can be plus 10 a lot more easily. Sonya is very underrated, I think. I think she doesn't necessarily need to rely on her speed. Like, she definitely wants plus speed, but she hits hard. Rodal in her weapon is just amazing, and she's my amazing Hector and Brave Eye counter, so I think she's definitely underrated. Um, Junie is also an S because of her place in the matter at the moment. She will probably drop down to like A plus or A one day when Reinhardt's no longer a thing, if that ever happens, but otherwise she's incredibly good and she can hold off Naoi, so. In A plus I put Cecilia mainly because she runs Gron Raven quite well, but also she's able to work away from Horse Emblem and that is her main reasoning for being an A+, otherwise she'd be an A, but I definitely think she's a bit underrated in that term, and that she doesn't need Horse Emblem to be good. Um, in A rank, I put Spring Camilla, Bowie, um, 
what you call it, female Robin and Sauron, mainly because they all fulfill similar roles. They're great Gone Raven users, and at the same time, they can be, um, well, Sauron can be Gromblade, but otherwise, they're very meh green units, in my opinion. Bowie is by far the best. I really wanted to put him in A+, but I can't with his resistance compared to, like, Robin male. If you're wondering why Robin female is in A and not in A+, it is because of the fact she can't be plus 10. Like, she's definitely very good, but I just think the amount of effort compared to a male Robin is just a bit meh. And Bowie exists, and I think Bowie is amazing. <laughs> Bowie is my underrated boy, to be honest. But finally, in B rank, there is Merrick, and Merrick is just meh. I, you never see Merricks unless they're close counted. But he's like he tries to be defensive, but it all falls apart for him. He just doesn't have the stats he needs to do what he wants to do. And then finally, the only green beast is Faye, and she's A+. I saw somebody say she doesn't deserve to be A+, and she's like B rank. No, no. She's uh, she's a Reinhardt counter. Like... She, she is amazing as a Reinhardt counter. In fact, a blue mage counter and a green mage counter, apart from Julia. But she has a place on Dragon Emblem when eventually we get home dragons because she's so bulky res-wise. And with Lightning Breath, she can hit from a distance. I don't see what there isn't to love about her. But she's not the best she probably could be, so... Anyway, finally, in the colourless category, this will probably be super quick because it's only the bows we're really interested in, but even then, they're all the same. Um, Daggers, Kagero, S rank, by far the best dagger user in the game. Like, Poison Dagger with her attack. Unless somebody else comes along with her attack stat or more, then she has no competition at the moment. Um, A plus is Felicia, and people are probably going to think I'm insane, but she is amazing uh, mage tank at the moment. Like, because she can hit a far away naturally, and most mages have low defense. With Silver Dagger and Quick Repose she can do her job quite well. So I would not underestimate her. In fact, even with Wrath, she might be even better. I don't know. She's naturally fast anyway, though. Um, a rank is Summer Frederick, mainly because he uses Poison Dagger quite well, but otherwise he's kind of... There's not a lot of reason to give him Poison Dagger over using Kagero. And um, then A- minus is Gaius and Saizo. They're both sort of the same unit in my book, but Saizo's slower. Whereas Gaius is faster, but but if I see any, it's normally one of those two. And then finally in B rank, Jafar, Matthew, and Jacob, they just have poor offensive spreads to begin with. You just don't see them, and I wouldn't advise necessarily using them over Kagero. But um, yeah, anyway, everyone's favourite section, the bow units, S plus rank, um, Brave Lynn and Bridal Cordelia. But everyone knows about Brave Bow, and I'm not going to go into it too much, but... Essentially, the main difference is, is that Lin prefers Cancel Affinity, whereas um, Bridal Cordelia probably prefers Desperation. And on top of that as well, it's like, Lin has worse offensive spread, but she's on a horse. Whereas Cordelia has better offensive spread, but she doesn't have a horse. So, it's like, they count, they're both essentially the same unit, but with slight different advantages, but they're both S+. Plus, like, under no circumstances think that one is the be all out all by user. They are both gonna wreck you no matter what. Um S rank, Eins and Summer Gaius, again brave bow for him. Um their speed is great, it's just their attack is lower than what they wish it was. And well I think Eins is the same as Bravelin, but the only reason Bravelin is higher is because of the horse. Like but otherwise, S rank. Um, A plus, George, Klein, Leon, and Takumi. Again, Brave Bow. They all fall into that category. Leon's got an advantage in being able to use close counter as well. And that's probably why I put him in A plus. But otherwise, simple as. Um, A rank, I put Clarice, Rebecca, Setsuna, and Virion. All decent Brave Bow users. Setsuna's far outclassed these days. I don't know why people still think he's A plus. And Virion's got some decent attack to use Brave Bow, so do not sleep on Virion. Um, A minus is um, Gordon and Faye. They fall into the realm of bulky bow users, and they don't necessarily want Brave Bow, although Gordon has it naturally, but they appreciate it and can use other bows as well. So they're more unique picks than Faye, if anything's going to be used for him by a sweet bow anyway. So. And finally, Niles is in B because, like, his niche before was being this res tank, but Innes has taken it away from him, so. 
yeah, you can forget about Niles these days. And then finally in the staff section, uh, A plus is Elise and Corrine. Both amazing horse um, healers. They've got great stats all around. Elise is better in my opinion because she has the attack to actually attack with Wrath Staff. Like, Clarine can as well with horse buffs, but... But the thing is with Elise, if you give her Wrathful Staff, um, absorb, give her all the horse buffs plus a ward, she can live every unit in the game unless they have a horse slaying weapon. I'm not kidding. Like, she, she can be that bulky. And this is coming from someone who has 19 defense and 30 HP. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, she can be amazing. Um, but obviously it requires a lot of work. Priscilla I put in A rank, however, just because I think she pales in comparison compared to the other two horse units. And then I put Bridal Lynn, who's by far the best infantry healer because of um, her speed and her innate dazzling staff and stuff. And Saka is up here. I would have put her in A minus, but thing is, there is that one YouTuber who does all like the Grand Hero battles and stuff with Sakura, like a team of four Sakuras. If you've not seen it, please go watch it. But her bulk, and she's got decent speed as well, I think put her in A tier. I do like using Sakura when I'm training and stuff, so. A minus, you've got Lissa, who's like discount Sakura, but with less speed. Sarah, um, Jenny, and Maria, they're all very meh healers. It's normally because they've got good base skills in general, which makes them good. Um, B rank is Lachesis, Mist, um, Lucius, and Azuma. Lachesis wishes she had more speed, and then she'd be amazing as Rattle Staff user. Mist is kind of, she can't really do anything but heal. Le um, Lucius, he's just, he's too weak defensively, and Azuma cannot hit anything without pain. And then finally, in C rank, is our Lord and Saviour, Riss. I'm not even going to talk about Riss, I'm sure you all know why, but... Just don't dissin him too much, because otherwise he won't rest in your summon posts, but... Anyway, that is my entire views on my version of the tier list. I would have compared to other people, but obviously they're always changing. I might make another one of these videos in the future, I don't know. But it depends how well this one's taken. But otherwise, that's how I feel at this point in time. And oh my god, I've been speaking for over an hour. I need to get a drink. I will speak to you guys soon. Bye.